I'm Harrison Graham. Let's get into a Chicago Bears Now mailbag. We got Major Bear Alert saying, with the Saints likely selling, could Chicago revisit trading for Chase Young? Ah, yes. Let's bring back the Chase Young trade rumors. Um, I, I guess you'd never say never, but I, I do think the value would be significantly different this time around. Um, he, he had to sign a one-year deal for a reason. He doesn't – he's not a – high energy down to down player. He's kind of known as someone who takes plays off. Certainly a talented pass rusher, questionable player against the run. Um, but you know, if it was like a fifth round pick or something like that, I I'd be open to it. Potentially. Um, I would probably lean on Montez sweat for kind of guidance and thoughts on that. Not like to make a decision, but like, Hey, give us the skinny on chase young. Like, is he worth taking a chance on? Like last year it was like, would you trade a second or a third for him? I don't think it would be in that realm. I think you're talking like a fifth or sixth. But uh, you could talk me into it if the price was right. But I don't think he'd be some major difference maker. I think he would just be a rotation guy at this point. What say you? Would you trade for Chase Young, type T for trade or P for pass? If it's cheap, I'd be interested. Otherwise, I'd probably pass. DC Viper, Bears, would a trade for Crosby be similar to the Khalil Mack trade for 2018? Would it cost the same and would you be comfortable – uh, in the trade if it happened. I'm trying to remember the full details of the Mac deal. There was like four or five picks involved, a couple coming each way. So uh, it was a lot. Um, I, I would guess it would be in the ballpark. Maybe you'd get it slightly cheaper since it's during the season, but it would still be significant. You're talking about a first-round pick plus more. Um, I don't know if you'd have to give up two firsts, but – I. I don't know, first and a second, or maybe it's like a first, a third, and like a day three pick, or maybe it's a one and a two, and you get a pick, like a late pick back as well. Um, Colin, you got it over there? Yeah, it was uh, two first-round picks, a third-round pick, and a sixth-round pick. I, I just – I can't give up that much. That That's a lot. Like It, it, it would cost a significant amount. It, or if it costs that much, that's probably too much. But if it was less than two ones, uh, I'd consider it. Subscribe to the channel. We'll be live for a Bears Commanders watch party. We're trying to take down Jack Sperry and the Commanders Report and new subscribers this week because he was talking trash. And uh, come on, we're better than the Commanders. Make it happen and join us at 2 o'clock on Sunday. Akira, should the Bears be sellers to get more picks in order to be buyers for the trade deadline, like trading for edge rusher Max Crosby, uh, Chuba Hubbard, and O-line help? So, the Chuba Hubbard thing, let me just address that first. ESPN linked the Bears to Hur Hubbard as someone they should trade for. Does that make any sense? You paid DeAndre Swift. Chuba Hubbard is a starting caliber running back. So are you putting Swift on the bench? Is Hubbard just a overvalued backup? Like, I, I don't really understand that at all. And I like Chuba a lot. Like, I, I think he would – of course, help this running back room, and you could argue he's a better overall back than Swift, but you already paid Swift, and he's playing well right now. So I, I don't really get that one. Um, I mean, Crosby, we've talked about it. It's going to cost an arm and a leg. I'm open to it. Uh, I'm not sure the Bears are. O-line help, sure. I, I, if there's a guard out there like a Wyatt Teller who's eligible to return from IR, he op had his practice window open with Cleveland. Maybe they can get him for a late day three pick. Um, I – Defensive line and offensive line are areas I would look for, uh, but without forcing the issue too much. Angry Bears fan, who are the extension candidates coming up during the season or after? Well, the ones during are like the Keenan Allens, the Tevin Jenkins, the – trying to think of another one. I mean, I guess you could already extend Kevin Byard. He's been that good, but he's under contract one more year. He'd probably just play it out at his age. Um, the ones after the season are all players who are in their third year. Kyler Gordon, Jaquan Brisker, which with his concussions, not sure you would do that right now. Um, you have to wait till the end of the season for those players. Uh, but uh, those are a couple of guys that uh, obviously Braxton Jones would be another one. If he has a really strong finish to the year and you like him at left tackle, maybe you could get him at a discount. Uh, so those would be some names to explore. You should do more than explore. You should sign up with Prize Picks today. Daily Fantasy Made Easy, where you can turn $10 into $1,000 right now with just four correct picks. Set your lineups of two or more players, 
and the more you put into your lineup, uh, the more you can win. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS to get our awesome deal right now, which is a $50 bonus straight into your account when you play for just 5 bucks right now. Got to use code CLNS at PrizePicks.com slash CLNS. Got a little two-player entry for Sunday. Going to take more than Caleb Williams, 199.5 passing yards. Uh, that's a goblin pick, which lowers the passing total. Easier to hit, obviously. And then I took less on Terry McLaurin, 58 and a half receiving yards. I think Jalen Johnson will be matched up on him a bunch. And uh, Jalen has been just dominant uh, for the last year and a half. So I like uh, uh, the Bears in that matchup. So again, code CLNS, play for 50 uh, or get a $50 bonus when you play for just five bucks. Doesn't matter if you uh, hit or miss on that entry, you will get the bonus and you got extra money to play with. It's an awesome deal. Best one out there right now for all daily fantasy uh, sports apps. Pick more, pick less, prize picks, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. We got Tito, appreciate the super chase. Is the center from Indy or the guard from KC, uh, will you take in free agency? How much will it cost? So I think you're talking about Ryan Kelly in Indy and Trey Smith in Kansas City. Uh, I'd be in on both. I think Smith is younger, so um, that's pretty intriguing. Plug and play right guard. Obviously, Nate Davis hasn't worked out. Matt Pryor's been a nice story, but is he a long-term starter? Maybe he's a guy you bring back for cheap to compete for a role. Um, I would be pretty intrigued with just giving Trey Smith a big contract. Now, if you do that, it probably means you don't pay Tevin Jenkins. So, you know, it's kind of a give and take there. Who Tevin played really well last time out. Hopefully he plays well the next few weeks. But, uh, yeah, I like Trey Smith a lot. He's really good. Poppy Chulo sits. If, is your boy Mitchell Renz delusional with his Crosby takes? Um, I don't think delusional. I think he's a passionate Raiders fan. I do disagree with him at the notion that Crosby will never be traded. I, I think there's a very real possibility he's traded at some point, even if it's not right now. A player who's that competitive and wants to win that badly eventually will just fold if the team he's on just keeps losing and continues to be an embarrassment, which they have. Uh, the Raiders are nowhere close to winning, which is why, even if it doesn't happen right now, like if this goes on for two more years, you're, you're going to tell me Crosby is going to keep signing up for this? Uh, I, I don't see it. So I, I think if you're a Vegas fan, you got to be pretty nervous about losing him at some point because he wants to win and they're nowhere close. Uh, so, yeah, delusional, I, I wouldn't go that far. But, yeah, I think um, – I think Crosby at some point could just bend the knee and say, screw this, I'm out of here. Predict the score, Bears, Commanders, Sunday, CBS, 325 Central Time. Who wins? What is the final score? Drop your predictions in the comments. If Jaden Daniels plays, I got Bears 28-24. If Marcus Mariota plays, I got Bears 28-17. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, Oblax69 uh, uh, says – Predict Caleb's stat line. I will be at FedEx on Sunday. I like a big game. I'll go like 255 passing, three touchdowns um, total. I'll go two passing, one rushing. Um, this commander's secondary is pretty poor. Their D-line's beat up right now. Uh, I think the offensive line should have another good game. So I like, uh, I like Caleb to put a pretty good performance out there. Maybe it starts a little slow off the bye week, but this team starts slow every week. So uh, maybe the bye week will help in that regard. DeJounte Perkins, would you take prime Devin Hester, Forte, and Erlacher added to the team if it meant Matt Canada becomes OC, Nathaniel Hackett head coach, and Matt Millen GM? Honestly, no. I, I There's almost no scenario where I would take Hackett as my head coach. I, he is a joke. So, uh, like, we – like we, and, and I'm guilty of this too. Like, we dump, we've dumped on Flus fair share here. Here's what I know about Flus though. Players respect him. I'm not saying they do or don't with Hackett. But he in in the the side of the ball he specializes in, he is objectively very good. Hackett is objectively very bad as an offensive play car. Like, I can at least trust that Flus is gonna have the defense ready. Um, so yeah, it, as much as it would be cool to have those guys, uh, I'd rather just roll with what you got. Andrew, how instrumental has Eric Washington been this year in getting this defense to a top tier unit? It's hard to measure, but the players point to him a lot. I know Montez Sweat talked about him on Thursday. Uh, other guys have referenced him as well. So I don't think it's just a a, a coach with the title. Like, I, I think he's a legitimate coach on this staff. Floosh just calls the game on Sundays. Um, I think he's helped a lot with the defensive line overachieving, which is his specialty. So, 
yeah, I think he deserves a lot of credit. Do I want him to take over the play going? No, because Fluce is ex excellent at that. I don't want to mess with that. Adam Downing with the Super. He says, I'll be at Alabama Mizzou Saturday. Who you got? First of all, have fun. That should be a good time. <sighs> I don't know. I Logic would say Bama in this spot. Just A, they've lost two out of three. Backs against the wall. But it's not saving anymore. I'll still roll with uh, the Tide, though, because Mizzou, I don't know if there's any Mizzou fans in the chat. If so, sorry. They might be the most fraudulent 6-1 and one team in the country. <laughs> I mean, they got stomped by A&M, and they should have lost like three or four other times. Uh, so, big statement opportunity for them, though. They go beat Bama this week. They're like, okay, like you found a way to win some tough ones, and now you got a signature win. So, um, we'll see if Brady Cook can play well. He has not played nearly as well this year as he did last year. Give me a follow on social media, at HGramNFL on Twitter and at HGramNFL on Instagram. Uh, you can hit me up over there. By the way, one note on that Bama-Mizzou game, Luther Burden, the Missouri receiver, is an absolute stud. So keep an eye on him. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how it plays out.